again, so the stomach size, because of the size and the amount that the horse can hold in the stomach is why we have to give small frequent meals. The other thing that, again, we're going to talk about with the Purina rep is ulcers and why that kind of grazing idea and how the horse's digestive system is set up, why it needs to continue to have things in the stomach in order to protect the horse from getting ulcers in the top part of the stomach lining. Um, so just kind of star those ulcer type questions. That's what we'll come back to that at another time to get more in depth with that. Um, but that kind of plays into that feeding principle. Okay, so main functions of the stomach is mixing and storage and controlled release of feed into the small intestine. So it's kind of this kind of storage area for all of the stuff. It's adding gastric acid to it um, to help begin the breakdown process. And um, very little absorption happens here, uh, but the you're gonna find that it's gonna start kind of breaking down to starch, fiber, protein, and fat. So your main feeding principles. Um, you can think of it as a cement truck. It's like this constant kind of moving and kind of churning things up. Um, as far as the um, things that kind of are in the stomach, the more fibrous feeds pass more quickly compared to the denser grains in this part of the digestive tract. Okay, so for moving on to the stomach, with, or to the small intestine, which is going to be number six, seven, and eight. So you can kind of circle those, mark those as um, those are parts of the small intestine, which is going to be the du duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. And those are all noted here on the screen. So hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, I can, can I zoom in? Yeah. There you go. Okay, so six, seven, and eight are all parts of the small intestine. So we'll get into that. Okay, so the small intestine is about 70 feet long. So the reason that it's called the small intestine is not because of the length, but of the diameter. And that's how it is too for like the um, large and small, the large and small intestine, and then also the large and small colon. It refers to diameter, not length. So the whole small intestine is 70 feet long and comprises of 30% of the total volume. Um, food moves pretty quickly through this part of the digestive tract, and it's about at a rate of one foot per minute um, to the cecum. And that's in as little as 45 minutes after the meal has been ingested. So the volume and rate can affect the digestion and absorption. So the more volume, and the faster the rate, the lower the absorption is. And things that move fast are more things like grains versus forage, which again, relate back to your rules of feeding. It's always best to feed hay before grain um, in the idea that the hay and the forage is gonna slow down the grain that's coming through as well to allow for better absorption of those fats, proteins, carbs, all the things in there that your horse needs. Um, and it's also the feeding principle of feeding more roughage than concentrate. It's easier for the horse to digest the roughage and it's more on the basis of what they supposed to be eating. It's here of unstructural carbs, which are starches protein and fat is digested and absorbed. And this is also where the amino acids are absorbed. 
Um, enzymes for digestion are produced by the pancreas or the intestine itself. And we do not have on here where the pancreas is. So it's just, it's part of the small intestine at the beginning there that secretes the enzymes and the pancreas secretes it into that first part. So the duodenum, if I can pronounce that correctly. So number six, that's where the pancreas is secreting the enzymes into. Let me see if I can. And if you have your pony called manual too, they each go through all these parts and with a little bit of detail as well. So you can look in there and see. Um, and also, so the horse has no gallbladder like we do. Um, so bile that normally the gallbladder would be responsible for is constantly introduced to the small intestine by the liver. And that's also not on here, um, but that's kind of related into the small digestive or the small intestine. Um, and that bile helps with the um, fermentation process of the feed. So it's helpful through this, the small intestine and how the liver secretes that in. Um, so this, in this part, the small intestine, this is where all the toxins are absorbed into the blood bloodstream. So again, like how we talked about the horse not being able to throw up as those toxins and things pass through to the small intestine, that's when they're going to be absorbed. So again, going back to um, being able to feed high quality feed so no mold, no spoiled feed, no contaminants, um, feeding good quality feed, and also um, feeding from clean receptacles that may have contaminants involved or the clean receptacles as well too. So if you're jotting this down for the lower levels, um, sometimes can put horses off of their feed. So they may not eat if they're not eating from a clean area. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to the large intestine, which comprises of four major parts. And that's the cecum. So that's number nine and 10. And they just located on here is the base and the body. So that's that big kind of it's and if you see the way that the track moves, this is kind of like a sack off the side. Um, the large colon, which is this is in several different parts. I believe in your second picture, if you guys go onto your second page too, or is this the first? Um, your other, we'll go back and so you guys can fill in the parts of this too, but it goes from the large colon to the small colon on this paper, on this other diagram that we are looking at, you guys can write down where it says like left, right ventricle, left ventricle, but basically that 12 through 15 is going to be your large colon. And then it goes into the small colon, which is the 15 through 16. And then finishing at the rectum, which is the end, 18. Did I get that right? 16, 17, yep. So you guys can jot those down real quick. And so then the large intestine is the beginning of the hind gut area. The large intestine, so this is 60% of the volume. I was trying to see if I wrote down what the actual length of the small intestine was too, but, or the large intestine, which it doesn't say, but 
the cecum being the first part is four feet long. So it's, it'll tell you in different parts of how long each is. Can, can you go over which numbers are part of which? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so number 12, 13, 14, and 15 is the um, large colon. Sorry, I was making sure I was saying that right. And 16 and 17 is the small colon. They just have these broken up into kind of these more detailed parts. You don't have to write all those down. You could just put the um, large and small colon for those numbers. So that's 12, 13, 14, and 15 is your large colon. And 16 and 17 is the small colon. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, so the cecum is four feet long. Um, and this is where the bacteria is. So when they're talking about like the good and friendly bacteria, you're starting that here in the hind gut and it starts here in the cecum. Um, that helps break down structural carbs found in forage. So this is this part of the digestive tract is where we really get into breaking down like the forage, the really fibrous stuff makes it all the way to this point. Um, fermentation of feed and absorption of the bioproducts of the fermentation occur in the large intestine. This is where rapid diet changes really affect the horse. So when we say you have to take 10 to 14 days to make a diet change, um, that's because the bacteria, the friendly bacteria needs time to adjust to the different material that the horse is now introducing into the digestive tract. So rapid diet change causes the population of the bacteria to shift, which can result in gas, loose manure, and colic. Like I said, that should take place over 10 to 14 days is usually what they say. So um, that would be like if you are feeding a ration balancer and then you decide to, to change to like a senior feed, right? So you're changing totally what your horse is getting as far as like the grain portion in that makeup. And so you need to give your horse time to adjust to the different makeup of the food. Um, and this too, again, with types of hay, you need to be a little bit careful with how quickly you make that, that change as well. Um, the amount, now if you're raising or lowering the amount, obviously we wanna just do that in a gradual sense if you're not giving your horse a ton more food at the one time, but the, changing the amount doesn't change the bacteria. So this is more like types if that makes sense. Okay, hang on one second. All right, so um, cecum, going over that large colon being the next part that's 10 to 12 feet long and it can weigh up to 50 or 75 pounds when it's fully ingested with food. It's just interesting to kind of know the lengths and like the weight of these, these things where, you know, as they're big animals, and then you can kind of see where all this, where this is kind of placed within their body. Um, further fermentation happens here. The small colon is eight to 10 feet long. And this is where some water is extracted and the remaining material, which is waste, is formed into the manure balls or the fecal balls. So that happens in the small colon as it's moving throughout. And that's where the remainder of your water is being taken out. Um, so horses that have kind of that like um, liquid that comes out that's not necessarily diarrhea, but it's kind of like on like 
a separate type of thing that there's something going on there in their small colon that isn't absorbing the rest of that water. Um, and I've actually looked into a little bit. There's not a lot of research onto why that happens. They say it could be a variety of different things, um, but that kind of isn't really looked into as much um, as far as there's, they have a ton of different reasons as to why that could happen, but that's occurring there in the small colon. And then the last part is the rectum, which is one foot long, and it just is a storage place for waste. So that's all it does. It's just wait, it holds the waste until the horse removes the waste. So that's all that that is. Um, a good picture that you guys can look at too is in your pony club HBA level. Um, and that on page 357 has a really good diagram as well of the digestive tract. So they have like very, a ton of different depictions. You can look at some different videos, which we're gonna look at one video on YouTube that kind of walks through all of that again in a little bit more organized fashion. Um, but those are all of your parts of the digestive system. What all did you say happened in the large colon again? I missed that one. That is where just further fermentation takes place. Um, and most of like the byproducts from the fermentation, those are absorbed at that area. So it's kind of the one of the last, it's kind of, these are the last hurrahs throughout to absorb all the, the remainder of what they can get out of their food. Okay, thank you. All right, so does anyone have any questions? I guess we're gonna look, we'll look at this top, this top picture too. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up. We can come back if you need to. Um, so this was just another depiction of the digestive tract, kind of in a little bit different way to look at it. Like I said, there's kind of, there's quite a few. Um, if you have, I have a couple of books in front of me that I will send out the titles on the follow-up email. So you don't have to write these down, but there's another, um, it's a horse anatomy, a coloring atlas. It's a book that goes into extreme detail on all of these parts. So, I mean, it's talking about every little like ligament, muscle, all those things that are also attached and around these areas. So if you wanted to get into kind of a more detail, um, you could do that. For those of you going for your HA and have to talk about the different parts, if you just basically stick to the ones that are listed in the HA manual, you'll be good. Um, you could kind of look into a little bit more extra things here and there for like kind of good talking points, um, but just stick to those. And then for you guys that are HBs, you don't have to lay, name any parts. Um, you just have to know the rules of feeding. So hopefully this has kind of helped you. So when you pull kind of a, car, a card that says, you know, may, make changes in rations gradually, you now have a little bit of information of how to talk about how that affects the horse's digestive system and overall health, which is on your card. Um, as far as for those that are talking about, need to know more about the print or the six classes of nutrients, especially the video that I'll show kind of talks a little bit about how those are all broken down. So that's just more information for you to know um, as far as like how that happens within the digestive tract. All right. So does anyone have any questions as far as to the specific parts? I can kind of keep relaying back information if you have questions on something that you missed. 
that I said, um, but did everyone kind of get that list of those basic parts or need any clarification on anything that I have said? Just giving you guys a minute while I'm organizing my stuff, if there, you guys think of anything while you're writing these down. All right, so I'll leave this up for another minute. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and watch a little video. Um, and I actually spent today kind of toying around on YouTube. They have several different kind of good videos to watch. Um, all saying about the same information, but sometimes it's helpful to listen to kind of different views and ways that people say things and explain things. Um, so I'll link those as well into the follow-up email. Um, one of them was an actual dissection of the digestive tract, um, which is pretty weird to look at when it's all kind of like dumped out on the ground there but also good to kind of like understand like how the size what the size is when you're kind of standing you know you can see the people standing next to it and kind of understand how big all of that stuff is um and, and the one point that he made in there was the size of the stomach i think is the most surprising of how small it is compared to the actual horse and how little can actually be held in there So I'm going to go ahead and make my way to the video. Um, I can come back and put this up. I also will share the answers too in the follow-up email. So I'll just resend this whole worksheet with these already on it. Great. Second, guys, while I find, I'm going to stop screen sharing while I find it on my. Okay. All right. So this one that I'm going to share was just one, it has this more kind of like digitized and I thought it was just helpful um, how they broke it down. So it's just, it's a nine minute video. So we'll just go through and it goes over these points. So just keep your notes handy. And as you go, the, the kind of parts that we're talking, talked about, you can and jot in little separate notes of things that he mentions he did not. Um, and like I said, we will browse out the video that has kind of someone made like a digestive track out of like fabric. It's like tubes and stuff like that, um, which helps get understanding of what, how big each part is. And then there's another video, like I said, that's like an actual dissection of that digestive tract of an actual horse. All right, so I'm gonna go back to... Okay, can you guys hear the audio on this too? Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Dr. Ross Teitzel. I'm an equine yes, yeah, we can. in Melbourne, okay. Victoria. Today, I'm going to discuss with you what happens to the feed that your horse eats and where does it go. Head to tail, we will discuss the structures and their functions that make up the horse's digestive system. Let's start at the head. This contains the lips, teeth, tongue, salivary glands, and the upper and lower jaws. The lips are very tactile. We've often seen horses sort out additives such as powders and pellets in their feed because we find them in the bottom of the feed bin. The tongue, this works by moving the food around in the mouth and also is involved in the swallow reflex. Next, the teeth. There are 36 in the female and 40 in the male. 
these are divided between the lower and upper jaws and the lower jaw is wider than the upper jaw to allow for the unique chewing motion which has both lateral forward and backward movements these are responsible for grinding the feed the type of feed can affect this motion and this can then lead to the sharp edges we often find in stabled horses on the outside of the upper teeth and the inside of the lower teeth this occurs when the horse is fed grain because the action to chew grain is different from the action to chew hay therefore the teeth of stabled horses need to be floated every three months to remove these sharp edges saliva from the glands in the mouth mix with the feed and because saliva contains bicarbonate it has a buffering and protecting effect for the amino acids in the stomach which is highly acidic the failure of the horse to chew its feed properly can lead to a bolus of feed getting stuck in the esophagus a condition we know as choke the next part is the esophagus this is a simple muscular tube connecting the mouth to the stomach it is approximately 1.5 meters in length next the stomach this is small in relation to the size of the animal approximately 9 to 11 meters in volume the natural feeding habit of the horse is to eat small amounts often we have changed that and now in lots of cases we expect the horse to eat large amounts of grain once or twice a day the stomach has three main areas the saccus cecus the fundus and the pylorus feed arriving in the stomach begins to break down under the influence of hydrochloric acid and pepsin a protein digesting enzyme if the feed is mainly grass and doesn't contain more than 20 percent fiber then it is already releasing soluble sugars and undergoing bacterial fermentation to produce lactic acid normally hydrochloric acid produced by the stomach mixes in with the feed and the ph drops and fermentation slows or stops if it doesn't happen then the stomach will fill with gas and you will get colic or rupture of the stomach changes in feeding can lead to unprotected mucosa and eventually ulcers in the stomach next is the small intestine this has three sections the duodenum the jejunum and the ileum it is 15 to 22 meters long and contains 70 liters food generally spends three to four hours here it is the main area of digestion the pancreas a gland that connects to the small intestine provides the enzymes that break down proteins starches and sugars bile drains into the small intestine constantly as the horse does not have a gallbladder like most other animals bile is involved in the digestion and absorption of fats food is broken down and then absorbed through the walls of the small intestine into the bloodstream and then travels to the cells that need it in the small intestine 30 to 60 percent of carbohydrate and most of protein absorption occurs as well as this fat soluble vitamins a d and e and k and the minerals calcium and phosphorus micronization of grains increases their digestion to 90 percent in the small intestine and this decreases the burden on the large intestine and also decreases the possibility of laminitis colic and acidosis if the food passes too quickly through the small intestine there is less time for the enzymes to act the addition of oil to the diet has been shown to reduce the flow of feed through the small intestine and so increase the time for enzymes to act and this increases the digestive efficiency horses are susceptible to colic and death from toxic materials in the feed the cow has bacteria in the rumen to break these down but the horse does not have this ability to break them down before they reach the small intestine and so toxic materials are absorbed into the bloodstream with sometimes catastrophic results therefore ensure no toxic materials such as moldy feed or hay are fed horses can't absorb microbial protein produced in the hindgut so horses with a high demand for protein such as foals lactating mares race and performance horses need to be fed high quality protein which can be broken down and absorbed in the small intestine so don't increase the amount of crude protein just increase the quality to ensure all the essential amino acids are at sufficient levels proteins are found in cell membranes connective tissue 
muscles, enzymes, hormones, and blood proteins. So to maintain body mass, you need large amounts of protein. The hindgut. This consists of the cecum and the large and small colons and the rectum. It is seven meters in length and has a volume of 140 to 150 liters. Digestion here is largely by microbial breakdown of plant fiber and indigestive starches into simpler compounds called volatile fatty acids. These are short chain fatty acids that are soluble in water, such as acetic, butyric, and propionic. The cecum is a blind sac, 28 to 36 liters in volume, where microbes break down feed not digested in the small intestine. The entrance to the cecum via the ileum and the exit to the large colon are both at the top of the cecum. So problems such as impaction arise if the horse eats a lot of dry feed without sufficient water. The microbial population is somewhat specific in what feedstuffs it can digest, and it can take two to three weeks to adjust to a new diet and return to normal digestive function. This is the reason we suggest to introduce new feed over seven to 14 days. Food spends about seven hours in the cecum and microbes produce vitamin K, B group vitamins, proteins and fatty acids. The vitamins and fatty acids are absorbed with very little protein. The large colon. This is three to 3.5 meters in length and has a volume of 86 liters. Fermentation continues here and most of the nutrients made by microbial digestion are absorbed here, as well as B group vitamins and some trace minerals and phosphorus. Feed spends as little as seven hours here or as long as 48 to 65. The small colon, this is three to 3.5 meters in length. Its main function is to reclaim water and thus fecal balls form which are undigested and indigestible portions of what was fed 36 to 72 hours before. The rectum and the anus, this is where the fecal balls collect and are then excreted by the anus. What do I need to remember? The main considerations when feeding your horse are to remember he is a grazing animal, normally consuming small amounts of feed often. He does not have a big stomach, so it is best to feed small amounts often than a smaller number of large meals. Ensure that all the feed is of good quality with no contaminants. Micronization of grain has been shown to improve its digestion. Feed some oil to slow the passage through the small intestine and ensure there is time for digestion in the small intestine. If you change feeds, do so over seven to 14 days to allow the horse's digestive system to adapt to this new feed. Ensure the horse has clean, adequate drinking water. Check their teeth and remove sharp edges to allow for good food preparation in the mouth. Remember that the horse needs fiber and 1.5% of its body weight per day is recommended. Always feed to suit the energy requirement of the exercise you're asking the horse to perform. I hope this has in some way helped you to understand the digestion of the exercise you're asking the horse to perform. All right, so I'm gonna pause it there because then if you need to jot these down, you can. Um, so I thought that that was a pretty good explanation. Um, I did find it interesting that they say to have your horse's teeth floated every three months. Pretty sure not too many people do that. Um, I know that my dentist recommends once a year, unless there's a horse that has um, a problem that's needing to be fixed. And so then he usually chooses a time frame. It's usually more like at the eight month interval to kind of get ahead of any issues of what they're talking about as far as um, if there's any dental issues that could be like ramps, um, step teeth, that kind of stuff. They can, they can get ahead of it if they do it a little bit sooner than a year. Um, just going down this list for rules of feeding. So we know feed smaller amounts often, um, and that's due to stomach size and how horses are normally grazing. The high quality feed for a variety of reasons. Um, so he was talking to about just how the horse is able to use like the proteins and things like that. Um, choosing a higher quality source may be more beneficial for 
certain horses. So again, when we talk to the Purina rep about kind of creating a diet for a different, different types of horses, as far as age, discipline, breed, that kind of all plays, plays a part in there. But also because um, the horse is unable to remove those toxins easily, like with not being able to at that beginning stage in the stomach by throwing it back up. Um, it's interesting that they talk about supplementing with oil. I bet if we look at most feed labels, there is some sort of oil in there. And that's probably has to do with that, um, how it's digested through the small intestine. So when we look at feed labels, it'll be interesting to see if we can find kind of an oil source in most grains. Um, new feeds over seven to 14 days, 10 to 14 days. Um, basically the point is to make them slow. Uh, clean water available. So they talked about where that occurs, impaction occurs. Um, I also, in one of the books that I have that I highly recommend if you're going for the kind of those upper level ratings or just want to know how to better feed your horse, the book Feeding Your Horse for Life um, has been a kind of a nice tool. But as I was kind of flipping through that um, to prepare, when they talk about the classes of nutrients, it was interesting to read that um, the horse only has to lose 12 to 15 percent of the water from its body before it's extreme like detriment fatal essentially um so that too when we're looking at diseases that affect the digestive tract and it often talks about like diarrhea being part of that and how critical it is that your horse doesn't have like persistent diarrhea where it's losing all of that water through the digestive tract and how um, harmful that can be to the digestive system and the horse as a whole. Uh, they say, you know, if your horse proceeds past a day or two with like pretty profuse diarrhea that you should definitely call your vet because they're, that's so crucial to their health it's kind of interesting when they say it as like 12 to 15%. It doesn't seem like very much um, before it's fatal. Uh, checking teeth. Um, so that's a big part of plays into age, but Jen, as they have said, the stabled horses using having more grain, less forage, and how that affects how they use their teeth. Again, something we can get into more when we talk with a dentist and how, um, what different kinds of problems we see more now than maybe we used to in the past. And then 1.5 of horses body weight per day in roughage. So basically the point being to feed more roughage than concentrate. Um, for any of you guys going for the HB and if you have your HB cards, like I said, these are kind of going over those rules of feeding section. Um, so if you have any questions about those, you can ask those now and I can help direct you on the answer. But does anyone have any questions about any of these parts of the digestive system? Um, I just had a question on the like second diagram that we went over. Um, yeah, let me I'll go back to that. Um, so like on the one on the um, worksheet I have, there's like leathers like throughout that entire portion where it says dorsal col colon. Yeah. So I was just wondering like if there was separate names for that or if it was just all considered that. Dorsal colon. Um, I would just mark that as yeah, 
it, I think it's just arrow because it's not even marked on here. If you can see it, like there mm -hmm. seems like there's more letters. I don't know. I just picked these because they were like two different renditions. I guess I didn't look that closely at them. No, it's, it's it seems okay. like there's more, there's more <laughs> letters than there is actual answers. Um, so just mark the one where it's like, it's pointing to that bigger portion. Okay. And I, yeah, I assume that that's all part of that whole chunk. Like I said, look at the like the one that they have in the pony club manual even go back to the video that i just showed because i thought that that also had a really good depiction of how that works mm -hmm. um but that kind of seg segues us a little bit into our project which i'll get on to i just want to make sure is there any other questions that you guys have before i go into that that and get sidetracked And you can type them into the chat or email me after or whatever, or after you go back and listen to the video, if you find that you have more questions. Um, I was just wondering if for like the digestive tract, is there like, because you said that the stomach is kind of start, the start of like the chemical breakdown. Are there like other ways that people like separate the stages, if that makes sense? Um. I don't even know if it actually said that in the Pony Club manual. I'm just checking back. I marked all the different pages that we were talking about to make sure I could <laughs> flip back to like what Pony Club says. Yeah. Um, because sometimes it's a little bit different. Uh, I think I lost where all the parts were. I don't know that it actually said that per se in the manual as far as like the stages. Yeah. Um, so then I wouldn't say that that's entirely important. And I'll have to go back and find it. I think that I actually found that on some other article that I was kind of looking through and finding different ways to say different things. Um, so if I find that, I'll send it out. But um, if you think of it though, in the kind of the stages of how it is broken down, when they talk about each of those parts, so they talk about the chewing. So that portion then goes into the stomach, which then begins to introduce the acids, which start breaking things down. Then it goes into the small intestine where um, you have further breakdown, but this is also where a majority of the absorption occurs. So you can kind of think of it like that. I don't know that there's actually, it doesn't say official stages where you at your rating will have to officially say okay. what stages. As long as you know what all those parts are and how they function, you should be good. Okay. But you can think of it in kind of that way as in like chewing, um, the beginning of the chemical process or the introduction of acid absorption there's you know more fermentation absorption occur in the large intestine that kind of stuff bacteria okay. you know bacteria in the colon and cecum large intestine area okay thank you <laughs> 